Hello and welcome to this B1 Usability Package e-learning session. My name is Rasmus Fult Jensen and the topic of this session is the Universal Function Advanced where we'll be looking into the message type. So here we are in Business 1 with a Universal Function configuration open. And now let's choose the type message which is this session. So message is a way of informing the user of something in the system. It could be a warning message, it could be an error message, uh, what you need in order to tell something to the user. So here you have the option to choose how the message should be shown, what should be in it, and how it should be presented to the, to the user, and something we call blog event, which we'll go into in just one second. So let's start out with something very, very simple and start from there. So we have a code, it has also generated a code for us, so let's just keep that and let's uh, put in a name and let's call it hello SAP. And our message will just be some static text saying hello SAP business one, like this. Let's just try to add this without not thinking on anything else. So now we have a message, but as the basic version uh, told us, we need to have it hooked up to something because no one is know that this this universal function uh, exists. So we we need to put it in uh, in the system. So let's just take a business button master data window, and we have a sample button here, and let's hook that up to that universal function called hello SAP and as you can see now when we press the button we'll just see the message so what other options do we have in our universal function so here it is and we chose to say hello message and as I mentioned we have the option to choose how we should show that message. Should it be a message box? That was what we saw here. Something popping up and we can't go on before we have pressed it. We can also have it as a status bar success. Status bar success meaning that you can see it down here now. Status bar warning. You see it the same place but it's now in blue as a warning or status bar error. So we can see it down here. So all depending on what you need to show to the customer and how important it is, you can either choose it to put it down here or as the message box itself. We have one more type in here called question, but we will save that until later. But just as a very quick summary, you can see here that if we press it, it will now be like a message box but with a yes no button and we'll talk in a bit on what the yes no button means. So let's just make it back into a message box first here and see what we can do with message before we look into the blog event and the question. First thing is that our message by itself does not need to be static like we have it here. Uh, it could be that we want to say hello to the business partner we have. So we can use the formatted search syntax in order to dynamically create the, the message we, we want. So for example, if I turn on system information here and see that Norm Thompson's name is here, so that is item 7, we would be able to go and put in like this 7.0.0 .0 for the dynamic syntax and we would now be able to say if we press it on this one we'll say hello Norm Thompson while if we go to another one it will say something different because it takes it directly from the screen. We are not limited to only one syntax, so if we wanted to have multiple, we could of course put them in in combinations of every case. 
let's just say it loads SAP again. Uh, because we also have one additional thing we can do uh, as a SQL colon syntax here. Uh, and in order to do that, let's just switch to another window. Let's go to a sales order and find out here we have test customer. So I have a sample two button here as well. And let me just hook that up to our same universal function. You can see that is 31, hello for SAP. So uh, if I press that button, it will call also say hello SAP. But uh, it could be that I wanted to show some data that is not on the screen, but is related to the screen. So for example, if we had our customer here, and we want to have some remarks here, important message. And we wanted to show that using that button. We will be able to do this with SQL. If we first look at this field, which in the database is called nodes in the data in the table called OCRD. So if I take the universal function now, and instead of just some fixed value, put in SQL colon, select notes from OCRD, where card code equals, and then the dynamic syntax of where the customer code is here. You can see that is item four. So if I put in four dot zero dot zero, I would now say that every time I press this button, execute this SQL, and the result of that SQL should be the message. So if I update this, go to the sales order, and press my sample two button, it will now say important message. And of course, if I change this to something else on this customer, it will change as well. So if I go to another Norman Thompson, and you see if he has some value, Another important message and press the button for him, we will see that it happens. Okay, I've just cleaned up the screen now so we can try something completely different. Uh, let's say that we have that we need to show the user an error message and not allow an AI invoice to be added unless the total is higher than 100. For that, we would need a combination of B1 validation system, and the result of that would be the error message, and that is why our universal function message will take, take care of it. So uh, let's set that up. The first thing we need to do is need to make a B1 validation configuration. So let's go into that, and if you aren't familiar with validation generation, I will uh, urge you to see the e-learning sessions specifically on this. So we we'll go a bit quick to it. Test total. And it happens on AI invoice, which is form type 133. Uh, it should happen every time we press the add button, and it should be in add mode only. And we need to have a condition saying that if and the total is item twenty nine that zero that number if that is lower than twenty again and Select show error for browse. So what this quickly does is that every time we press the add button, we want to have that if the value is lower than 20, we should have a show error uh, message show up. So we put in show error and what function? Well, it's a function of type message. So we create a new one, 
type message and say cans at invoice with total lower than 20. In this case, we will be using the block event because block event meaning that we will stop business one from adding the invoice because we are working in before action. Again, please see the validation system uh, e-learning for more on this. But basically, we say if we block it, is it, we will show the message and SAP is not allowed to go on. If we do not block it, it will show the message, but let SAP work on. So in this case, we will block it and we will show it as a state spy error. We need to give it a name. this and let's try it just before we add it of course we need to actually save this validation we only made the universal function but we actually need to save that we want to have our test so now we're ready for the test so 1000 put in an item and we said 20 so let's put it below that and see what happens. So if you press add, you'll see now that we can't add invoice total lower than 20. And you saw we wasn't allowed to go on. If I were to just as a test take away the block event, you will be able to see that the message came up, but we were allowed to go on. I could essentially add this once I put in some tags so, and so on. Uh, but the message didn't block from SAP trying to, to move on. So let me turn it back on and come to the final thing, which is question. So question is a way of conditionally saying if I want to block or not. Uh, so if I cha change this into continue anyway, like this, and put it as a question, we will see now that if I try to say add, it will now give us the error message, but it gives us the option to continue anyway. If I say no, it doesn't go on. If I say yes, it begins to try to add the, the invoice. But again, I, I wouldn't be able to add it here because I'm missing the text. And if I want to be more uh, helpful in this, I could perhaps go and say current is and then use the dynamic syntax as well number and again I can combine everything so current is 10 but it should be lower than 20 so you saw here that we could just launch uh, messages in all kinds of way that doesn't make that much sense but if you combine it with a validation and some uh, some business logic you will see that a message would be very powerful to show to the user just conclude this session for training material please go to service.biom-it.com education or if you want a free demo of the product go to license.biom-it.com b1up if you want to contact us, you can do it either by our sales email or our support email. Thank you for attending.